there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates and today I'm going to be going over one of our newer templates that was added recently, the Employee Performance Review Template. And the reason we added this one is because we have several templates where you need to copy and paste a performance, an employee performance rating into it. We have a variable compensation bonus calculation worksheet that will look into the performance rating per employee. So you can set up a bonus matrix based on their performance ratings. And then we also have the annual merit increase template and that will also place to paste in the performance ratings per employee so that you can also have a matrix that gives different base pay increases to the employees based on their performance rating. Okay, so here's a blank version of the template and we're looking at the all employee details page. You'll see we're starting out blank and it's set up to work with 20 employees. So there's a different tab or page for each employee, and there's also a summary page we'll, where we'll start out with. You can save as many versions of the file as you need to. I would say if there's more than 20 employees reporting to one person, that's quite a lot. You kind of just need this to be for whoever's doing the performance review. That's how many uh, how many reviews they're doing at one or how many direct reports. So I'm going to just copy in some sample data I have from another file. So just employee ID, name, date of hire, time and position, and location, office. You can fill that out. I'm just going to go ahead and hide it because it's taking up extra space. So the next part, we're going to want to enter this. You can split out weights between a manager's review and if you want to allow self-review or peer reviews to get a more uh, fuller picture. So you could split this up to be like 70% manager weight and 30% a self or peer review weight. Or if you only want the manager's um, review to count towards the final rating, you could just set it at 100% and zero and you could still have the employees do a self review. Uh, but that's, you would enter everybody's weights, how you wanna structure that here. And then all this information is gonna populate into each employee's review tab. So the gray columns are formulas. This is gonna update after we go to the employee tab and do the review. So I'm gonna go ahead and click to review number one, and you'll see that the information, their ID, name, department, everything is populated here, even the weight we decided between manager and peer. So you'll see that it comes with some self-populated metrics, but you can completely change and customize this. This is just to give you a starting point or idea. And I also have a tab, for example, measures and scales, just to give you more ideas on what you want to actually be measuring. So you can definitely change this up and customize it to work best for what your company values the most so that all of this is editable, the weights, per metric are editable. And you'll see we have the manager score. You would enter it here. The gray cell is a formula. And then you also have a section for the peer score. So if you're having a peer review or employee self-review, you could print this out and, and have them enter it or share this. Just be careful when you're sharing, you're not sharing like all employees information. For this example, let's just say we're doing just the manager waiting at 100%. And so you would just come in and you can edit the weight. Say that we wanted, you know, 20% quality, 20% job knowledge. You could just do, you know, two, four, six, eight. It just needs to add up to 100%. So you don't have to use all these rows. This bottom number just needs to be 100%. So you could do that and hide the ones you're not using. Over here, this is only on employee number one, and you're gonna wanna use whoever you use, whoever you paste into employee number one in this page, you wanna try to use someone that's gonna have the same metrics as majority of people. 
you can customize the metrics, but you can also choose to apply this metric to all employee scorecards. So everything's defaulted to yes. And that just means that as we click over here, we're going to have the same, same metrics here. So say that I actually wanted to remove these and then it's just going to have the first five on each employee tab. So you can have the metrics that you set in employee number one apply to all 20 pages, and that saves you time on entering the, the example, the metric, and that sort of thing. But you also don't have to do that. If you set it to no, then we're just going to, then it's just going to ask you to then enter the metrics on each page. Here, I'm going to go ahead and enter a few scores. You can use this on a scale of 1 to 5, 1 to 10. It is meant to be numeric. That's kind of important. It's a 1 to 5 scale. I'm just going to enter some numbers here. And so that, if you scroll to the bottom, that gives us a total of 3.8. And it's also going to show the 3.8 up here at the top based on the, what we've entered for the manager score. So that's how you would do each employee page. And this note where I reference adding any new metrics, that's if, for example, we wanted employee one to have these four metrics, but then employee two, we want to use something else. Maybe we want to use organizational planning and oversight for employee number two. I'm going to paste that in here, type some examples. Actually, let me put one more staffing and delegation. Say employee number two is a manager and the first employee number one was not. So you're going to want different metrics, we'll say 4.5. So then it's going to give me the 4.25 final rating. And we're going to want to add these new metrics that we added in employee number two into our criteria summary in this green part where it says add new metrics here. This is just going to help us track so we can see each employee, what they scored in which metric, and then we're also going to be able to have a summary page showing where the company is scoring the highest per metric. It's going to be here in the overall summary, so we're going to have average ratings per metric so that you can see kind of overall where are the people falling so that's how you would fill out the individual scorecards and as you go back you'll see that proposed performance rating is populating for the first two employees and it's showing the manager rating we didn't do the employee or, or peer self rating but it would populate here if we did that now something i didn't go over yet is this proposed rating category they're both falling into the four dash advance that is something you're going to want to set an overall summary. So you're going to want to say the low and the high and what you want to label it for each one. You can fill this, this entire chart out. So it can work up to 10 ratings categories. So they're both falling into four because we set if someone scores a 3.51 to a 4.6, then they're falling into four or advanced. You can name this anything you want. You can leave the four out. You could just put advanced. The You just have to have a number in the low and high columns so that we're able to, to assign the label. And then we're going to look at expected versus actual. And so you can put in your expected percentage per ratings category. So how many you would expect to see in, you know, unsatisfactory, developing, proficient, if you want to try to get like a bell curve distribution of ratings. And these gray columns will populate with how you determine to label it in the chart above. And also the actual ratings will populate from you've entered. So it's showing that we uh, did performance review for two employees, but we do have a total of four. So we still have two more to go. And both of the two employees are falling into advanced. So we haven't finished the other four, so it's only showing 50%. We haven't finished the other two that need to be reviewed. So that's basically how it works. And the hyperlinks will help you 
navigate to the 20 different tabs for each employee and then you can just click to go back to all details so it's easy to navigate and to summarize your information. So I hope that helps. And now you are all set. If you did not have a performance rating program before, now you have something that you can utilize. And this also, again, works well if you're using the variable compensation template or the annual merit increase template and you want to have performance rating play some sort of factor in the compensation the employees get, this is a great way to start implementing something consistently. And again, you can find this template by going to timesavingtemplates.com and then click on the shop in human resources section. And if you sort by latest, it'll be one of the first ones that you'll see the employee performance review template. And until next time, don't forget that I'm here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using Excel spreadsheets. And I also wanted to mention that we do have some free resources here. If you go to timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources, we also have human resources and compensation section. We have a compensation metrics cheat sheet, and that's going to be helping with salary range metrics and that kind of thing. And then we also have some templates for small businesses, rental property management, and a free guide to getting started with Excel. So feel free to check that out whenever you have a chance. And thanks again for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks.